let's say his name three times fast and have him summoned so that he can answer you in the flesh, in the ghostly flesh. <laughs> the ghostly flesh. Tell me more about <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson. Because I'm a little, well, I'm a little shadowy on him. I know that he inspired. Okay, so he, Nietzsche was actually a little bit inspired by him. He had read some of him in translation. Oh, is he? Yeah, he was. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. He was. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh? That's interesting. Well, n- well, Nietzsche is kind of a definitely a solitary figure. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so Emerson was kind of. I mean, I'm not a huge fucking expert on Emerson, but I'm really down with his, you know, his main points in that um, he really believed that solitude was a precursor for individual growth and um so for him you you had to be willing and that goes back to the idea of the nonconformist. you have to be willing to um to go your own way to a certain degree to be able to find yourself and a lot of this stuff can really start to easily sound like a uh, woo woo new agey stuff and it is the the original school of transcendentalism so it does have uh, this is the roots in some ways of that woo-woo shit. But he, you know, this is the the, uh, the the more respectable version that is a little less watered down, I guess. Um, it's not only about clutching your crystals and going renting an Airbnb cabin. It is the willingness to take on, uh, in, in, in some ways, the hostility and the rejection of the community. And um, that is what Truman does. So Truman does follow the path of solitude and nonconformity as a route to self-knowledge. Oh, and, and you see that. this is something that. that's important. Yeah, you see that. Because he's looking for, you know, his father. He's looking back at pictures. He's trying to figure out his story. And it requires him to, to turn away from his father friends and family and eventually to leave his community you see that in the film though that's a great point uh uh, he's you know it's funny when you talk through these things and then you can find more and more in different films i don't know if it was put there purposely or not but so remember during his the main time he tries to explore what might be the real world is when he goes into that little garage area or like whatever it is, basement area where He's his alone. lawnmower is, and he tries yeah, to be alone. Basement. And he tries to be alone. Yes. And that's where he takes out his uh, little chest, box, box of, of stuff, like, and, and, you know, assembles Sylvia's face or whatever. Uh, yes. So it's always a sense of trying to be alone in order to figure out what reality is. Himself. And yeah, the truth. outside world does not like that. They have a camera in there. He has to actually foil mm-hmm. the outside world by tricking the camera in order to escape. Yeah, and and so two things here. When he goes down to that basement, which is like his space, essentially, this is where he, you know, yeah, this is where he tries to piece together, literally in some cases, piece together mysteries of his life. So the the picture of him trying to, I'm assuming he's trying to figure out what Sylvia would look like. He's trying to remember what she looked like by piecing together uh clippings from women's magazines which is pretty creepy yeah wait a second what is that about i just realized is he actually because isn't she he's trying to recreate a photo of her i'm pretty sure that's what he's doing is trying to because he is trying to there's a scene where he finds like the perfect eyes and then it, it it he puts it there and then it shows i think the next scene is sylvia's eyes or something uh, okay i don't, I don't remember so exactly she's that not because i thought maybe she was a model in the outside world and she, he was finding advertisements of her in no, the magazine that's not right putting, that wouldn't make any no, sense because why would recreate. he be cutting the he up. just need one photo yeah he's trying to like take all these different uh, facial structures and put them together to recreate a photo of her hmm. which is an interesting th- it's it's a little creepy but well it's, it's like, creepy it's because we associate thing. that action of cutting out things from magazines with the traditional thing in movies murder movies with the serial killer that cuts out oh, letters yeah, the, in order to put di- to hide their handwriting no they're cutting out in the olden days or whatever in when people didn't use com- when serial well, killers didn't use computers yeah. what they would do is they would I, <laughs> apparently and i don't even know if this is real cut out uh different fonts yeah, letters so, so they're the, hiding they their were handwriting, not handwriting. Right? yeah yeah but there's also just the, the element of like you know cutting obsessing out, over a woman right you know and, and, and like kind of like putting it in books yeah scrapbooks. It's, just, it's a little creepy it's a little creepy. sure i mean it's fine i i i allow it i wouldn't i don't know if i would be 
I mean, he doesn't have a photo of her, so he's trying to recreate a photo of her, which is kind of romantic in that way. Yes. Why we'll didn't he have go. a camera? I mean, well, whatever. I don't know. It is an odd when you let, start to no, think about it. No, don't though. do that. Uh, no, I won't do that. But it is <laughs> odd when you think about it, because I didn't really think about what he's doing there or why he's doing it. And I guess... Oh, yeah. I noticed it right away, because I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, doing? I noticed <laughs> it, but somehow it just kind of... Uh, yeah. It, because it's right from the beginning of the movie, one of the first things you see him do is go to the magazine kiosk and buy a magazine, you know, and say, oh, it's for my wife. She loves the fashion magazines yes. or whatever. Yes, yeah, that's true. And I just, yeah, yeah. it just you became can, you this kind of not thing. Link that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Truman yeah, Show they part can, they can seem separate. three. We'll investigate oh, that God. question. <laughs> Whether Truman is actually a serial killer. Ralph Waldo Emerson, yeah. please advise me on the appropriate time that a podcast should run as my business well, consultant. <laughs> I don't know what he would say about that. He'd probably say... I keep asking you to tell zero me. Zero minutes because you're talking to the outside world and you should be spending that time like Truman did in his basement in self-reflection. But that's kind of the interesting thing about that scene is that it really is the idea of... That's bad business. Going away. That's bad, that's bad oh, yeah. business, Ralph. Well, Emerson wasn't a... <laughs> Emerson wasn't a, uh, a wheeling and dealing business Well, man, I may you know? need to go talk to Henry David Thoreau. He's a as, transcendentalist. I mean, they could talk to Henry David Thoreau and see what he says. They all had like three names. So we should bring that back. Oh, yeah. You you bring it back. I do bring it back, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you do. You are I use the, the, the initials as kind of the, the middle thing. The three name uh, school. You gotta have it. <laughs> you gotta have it. You gotta have three. <laughs> That's my business consulting advice, though, everyone. You gotta have three names. Just get a bunch of names, a bunch of uh, yeah, letters. Yeah, the more the better. Yeah. Okay, I'm no business consultant, Ralph Waldo. Em- Fuck, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ah, uh, you've been t- pe- you've been pushing your luck. I did it really one. well that first time, though. Let's be. Yeah, honest. you know what we should do? Like before we start the podcast, we should just say Ralph Waldo Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Like you know how they do it do three times. To, you did to, it twice. Try it. Ah, Come I on, got you nervous. had it. You I didn't want to fuck up. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> It really is, you know. You sh- we should use it in a warm up, you know. Keep the yeah. keep the words limber and. Well, you know, I do singing, right. you know, to warm up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep that on the behind the scenes. You can pay yeah. extra patrons if you want to get a track of his warm up singing. It's gonna cost a lot. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe okay. you. Maybe I'll decide if we'll do that. Maybe I'll go stop <laughs> start my own side business. Yeah, <laughs> warm up cassettes. They gotta be cassettes. They should be cassettes. <laughs> so anyway, the the interesting thing about uh, this aspect, I really liked this because so um, you have this part where Truman goes to be alone to seek self knowledge and to to uh, to kind of find truth. This is literally what he's doing is seeking truth, and it requires him being alone. And there's a great part where um, I think it's that same part that you were talking about where he says uh, where he's down in the basement and he's kind of I think he's looking through photos of his father because at this point he's like, I think my father is alive, you know, and um, he's he's starting to piece things together in solitude. And Meryl comes down and says, I made macaroni. And I think Meryl's it's just the, the best. Meryl's his friend. His dude friend. Not the wife. You want to say that? You want to say that one again? Isn't Meryl his... Is Meryl a man's name or a woman's name? Yeah. Meryl can... Meryl, Meryl Lynch. is a woman's... Oh, my God. You totally... You think Meryl Lynch was excellent... a woman banker? Yes. I mean... Hashtag... Meryl is the wife. Marlon is the, is the uh, friend. Marlon. Marlon is the friend. Meryl is the wife. I don't know why they Fuck, both have right. M. Maybe there's something there. Yeah, anyway. let's We're, we're cutting that out. I'm no, gonna... leave it. Leave my mistakes. <laughs> my business advice is always well, leave Well, not your... when they derail me. Well, there's no way anyway. I can repair that. I, I clearly interrupted you and uh, was wrong. <laughs> anyway. I'll go back to my words. Word. Word and naughty. Please. <laughs> you better word and not your own word. Meryl's, me Meryl, mine. Meryl, okay. I, well, okay. I will defend myself. Meryl can be a man's name. I said it. It really shouldn't be. Can it not? But, oh, um, now I'm a gender, whatever, yeah, you are. critical. See, I, I don't just know. You. A gender, gender harasser or whatever I it is. I think, <laughs> like, yeah, it's Merle. You know, like Merle Haggard or. 
That's not the same. If you're from that's the not south, the it same. can be. Yeah, yeah, but Merle? it's not. I don't think it's the same. All right, it's, Isn't that it's, spelled like M E R L E? Ooh, you know what? Merrill means sparkling sea. Huh. The sparkling sea. The uh, as opposed to we were talking about the chaotic feminine the of the waters, sea. as opposed to the turbulent sea. She is the uh, see. Look at how my interruption actually brought us to greater knowledge. Maybe we won't cut it out after all. <laughs> that was freestyle <laughs> etymology. That's actually really good because uh, Meryl is this hyper uh, controlled, perfectly quaffed version of femininity. And you see her start to come undone the more and the more he presses her until at the end, she's kind of this like uh, a more aggressive and desperate version of herself. What's his friend's she name? Really Marlon. Marlon. Sorry, my research was uh, terrible. Uh <laughs> Little hawk. Yeah, any. I don't know if that doesn't really do much. Uh, I don't know about that. Anyway, so solitude as the precursor for individual growth. I think that's a theme that you see in this movie. That's uh, and and it's it's it it really is um a strong point that the community that Emerson would love this part that the people in Truman's life, the community itself, are the obstacle to his self-knowledge, to his uh, seeking truth. And that's exemplified in that scene where he's just about to piece the mystery together. Hmm, is my dad alive? And Meryl comes in with this very domestic, benign uh, statement. I made macaroni. As if this is the most exciting thing. And really, you should be way more interested in this benign dinner plate that I've made. And, and, and you should come back into um the 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 domestic allure of what a happy life should be which is your perfectly dressed 1950s wife making um dinner for you instead of this solitary uh act of digging through one's past and trying to find a deeper truth so it's the people in his life it's the community that distract him from that process of self self-discovery 